Bonsoir, good evening. Um, the conference will be in English. Um, it's, uh, I was thinking lo a long time about uh, French or English, but then uh, for time reasons and because I wanted to do a small introduction about the intimacy, we decided to do it in English. So it is a honor for Durish and Nolly to be invited by the uh, Maison de l'Architecture to this lecture series titled Intimacy. It's a pleasure that I will try to share some thoughts on architecture and show some projects related with this theme. But first, I will try to share some thoughts about intimacy. Intimacy is strictly related to ourselves and to the way we relate ourselves to our context to the perception of the context related to the self. But the strictest intimacy is the exclusive relationship that we have to ourselves and to our inner life, and it is primarily a metaphysical experience. The higher the sense of intimacy, the closer in our relationship with it, the closer we allow persons to relate with us. In sociology, the concept of intimacy is mostly related to other people. But in the same way, intimacy is also strongly related to objects and places, and therefore to space. Thinking in these terms about intimacy, we discover that there are different circles of intimacy. These circles of intimacy are related to our perception of space, which is the main topic for an architect. So if we consider that intimacy is strictly related to space and to the way we relate ourselves with other persons and things in space and with our space perception, so distance and atmosphere plays an important role. The interior paintings of Felix Vallotton are full of this intimate atmosphere. There is always a space and a time to which our sense of intimacy is related. Intimacy as the relationship of individuals with space has always been an important theme in painting. The painting, uh, paintings of Edward Hopper often represent an invasion of the intimacy of unknown people. This act of voyeurism penetrates all circles of intimacy. The title of the painting makes our imagination zoom out from the room and imagine the house near Wash Washington Square and even the New York of the 30s itself. The viewer implied in this painting is a city dweller who, like a voyeur, knows intimate aspects of strangers' lives. In his essay, Levels of Intimacy, Peter Zumto speaks about proximity and distance. He discusses about the relationship between building and human body in terms of mass. He is interested in investigation of uh, how shape, size, scale, dimensions effect on human sensations. What is it that one space can make you feel humble and small while another can make you feel proud and light? Architecture is used to define the frame of memory, the border of public and private space, and the permeability of exterior and interior space. Architecture is not merely a matter of space, but also of time. At first sight, there seems that to be a contradiction between the notion of intimacy and the notion of public space. Um, is intimacy really the opposite of public? The concept of intimacy is often defined by the confrontation between private and public space. Maybe we can consider the city as a territory that draws together the sum of the lived experiences and trajectories that constitute our inner sense of the city. Prior to any strictly physical territorial reality, the city represents the emotional territory of each one, our collective identity. In this sense, the urban space can have a very high level of intimacy. I think it is important to note that the idea of the territory implies permanence, whereas intimacy can be a brief, temporary experience. To link intimacy with the territory enables us to think about individuals in relation to their context and with their transformation in time. The notion of territorial intimacy condenses two heterogeneous parameters. Intimacy, which is psychological and physiological, and the territory, which is geographical. 
Speaking of intimacy related to our activity is speaking about our architecture. This lecture will be composed of six memos about architecture. The first memo is intended as a general introduction to our way to practice and teach architecture, while the five following memos consist in five built architectures, five projects that we consider representative for our work. Project projects that maybe deal with different levels and kinds of intimacy. Living architecture. This is the title of our very first lecture we had the pleasure to hold in an iconic building like Ms. van der Rohe's Crown Hall at IIT campus Chicago. Living architecture was also the title of a related exhibition of our work at iSpace Chicago in December 2000. It was the first time that we had the opportunity to pose and think about architecture ik et nunc, which means here and now. And it is the here and now of our architectural thinking that we will try to expose as an introduction to this lecture. In our contemporary everyday life, we are constantly faced with plenty of images, inspirations and topics provided by the most different disciplines and fields of human life. The multiplicity, this multiplicity and complexity of science is very important for our work and life. It is also the reason why we strongly believe in the idea of here and now, Hicket Nung, where the particularity of local meets the complexity of global. Quoting Walter Benjamin, it is its presence in time and space, its unique existence at the place where it, it happens to be that is fascinating us about architecture. Since 1993, we try with our work to face the fundamental topics of our territory, our society, and our economy. Indeed, the practice of architecture is a fascinating profession. The idea to, to build something, something useful for the society, gives a sensation of great satisfaction and is our best achievement. On the other hand, the practice of architecture is becoming more and more complex, and the role of the architect is called into question. Facing a project, we recognize two kinds of thinking that interact between them, making images coming forth. The first is given by the effort to see everything as new, absorbing with our imagination all the impulses that derive us from the place and the pre-existing context without prejudice, like as we were facing a certain problem for the first time with the typical enthusiasm of children. The second approach is given by our practice, our professional competence and the previously acquired experiences and by the materials accumulated in our memory, experience, evolution, tradition, reference. We always strive for sustainability in our project. Between uh, 1989 and uh, 1993 with Giancarlo Durisch, we designed the Swisscom Service Center in Giubiasco. At the time, the Swiss label for sustainability building, Minergi, didn't exist yet but we realized the first high energy efficiency building of southern Switzerland with six main projects in the field of ecology and economy. While renovating the Teatro Sociale of Bellinzona, we came across the big theme of historical heritage. We got convinced that the best way to preserve the past was to make those buildings reusable in the contemporary age. As consequence, this sustainable approach to the past has to face the reality of contemporary. With the restoration of the Benedictine Monastery of Claro from 96 to 2007, we achieved an important and intense experience with the forms, the construction, technologies, and the materials of our tradition. We learned from our Benedictine clients the importance of always establishing precise and common rules. Thanks to the uh, construction of the new Chiasso Cultural Center with the Max Huber Foundation in 2005, we realized how, starting from a small private commission, it is possible to redesign an entire town, a particular process that Roman Hollenstein in the Neue Zürcher Zeitung defined as the kulturelle Neuerfindung einer Stadt, which means the cultural reinvention of a city. With this project, we discovered the potential of that, what at the time we had defined urban activators. The practical experience taught us how to achieve the best from our ideas, to get a good atmosphere, s striving for uh, the right expression and balance, we have to be able to control the physical aspects of architecture. In other words, we need to be constructors. 
Architecture is a system that is strictly related to the site. In this system, the different aspects of the project constitute a complex organism. At the origin of every project, we find the recognition of the uniqueness of the site and, and, and of the essential characteristics and proprieties that determine it. With the topic of site, we can understand, depending upon the situation, a landscape, a city, a urban space, a building, a room, an object, a surface, the context of our intervention. To build means intervening on an existing balance and modify it in an irreversible way. The challenge is to recognize the essence of a place with the purpose to create a new balance condensing an idea, concentrating it, and reducing it to an essence in a way to crea create a new reality that gives us the sensation to rest in itself, provided with its own naturalness and uh, natural evidence, a natural evidence that is able to reconnect, uh, reconnect itself to the collective memory. Maybe it is this self-comprehensiveness that gives us the sensation of intimacy related to place. In our more recent re realizations, we were able to make a synthesis of the experiences we earned from former projects. The professional training center of the Swiss Master Builders Association in Cordola represents the ability to carry out a complicated task with a simple and essential system. The building is elevated from the ground to prevent flutes, a light building. Il faut être léger comme l'oiseau et non comme la plume. On should be light like a bird and not like a feeder, says Paul Valéry. This building has this ambition. Our interest for the architecture of the city brought us in recent times to deal repeatedly with the topic of transformation of abandoned urban spaces, often related to the railway infrastructures close to train stations, like the project for a professional center for fashion design and production close to the Chiasso train station, close to the Swiss-Italian border. The professional center could have been a big showcase of Ticino competence open toward the main railway which connects northern Germany to southern Italy. The confrontation with the idea of reuse that was the main project team last year with our students at the Mendrisio Architecture Academy made us consider that everything is reuse and to research of on the paradigm of palimpsest. The city of Split is the re-inhabitation of the Roman Emperor Diocletian's palace, an imperial palace that fell into disuse after a time and then became the structure for the new city. In his wonderful book, uh, Invisible Cities, Italo Calvino makes Marco Polo declare to Kublai Khan, every time I describe a city, I'm saying something about Venice. The Venice Lagoon, an ecosystem that embraces and includes the city, is for Venice what for other cities is the countryside. The reuse and the rebirth of the abandoned islands of the Venice Lagoon as an urban constellation integrated to his natural context would constitute a new perspective for the future of the city. Our students were invited to work on small territorial fragments which are characteristic to the Venetian Lagoon. Islands, octagons, fortifications, lighthouses, and shelters for fishermen all charged with past histories and functions. Each, each student adopted an abandoned island, analyzing its history and pre-existences in order to describe, like Calvino in Invisible Cities, a new program and a coherent project for his reuse, developing a sensibility that celebrates the fleeting and dynamic relationship between physical structure and program. For example, a center for navigation control at the cruise ship of the cruise ships at Sant'Angelo delle Polveri, an observatory of the wildlife of the Northern Lagoon and of the Roman archaeological excavation site at Motta di San Lorenzo, or a public thermal bath at the Renaissance fort of Sant'Andrea, a philharmonic hall over the island of San Giuliano entering the bridge Ponte della Libertà which connects the mainland to Venice, the Venice Museum or and Center for Archaeological Studies already scheduled but never achieved on Lazaretto Vecchio Island. Actually, these examples put in evidence like a the city, but also our memory, is nothing else than a palimpsest, a document that is continuously overwritten. The contents that are no longer necessary are cancelled and substituted with new contents that correspond to the contemporary physical and social requests. 
the idea of reuse is not only a physical operation, it can also be a way of thinking that can inform the design of new buildings. In our competition entry for the transformation of the Lausanne uh, tra uh, locomotive workshops, part of the heritage of Swiss railways into a new museum of art, the former space of the factory building is maintained as a public empty space below the new museum. A big covered public space, a passage below the museum within the walls of the previous locomotive workshop could have linked the esplanade of the new cultural center of the city of Lausanne with the train station and with the city. Also, the industrial architecture would have been visible mostly as a fragment composed by the old facade and the soil, the special morphology, the hierarchy of the sheds and halls of the workshops would have been still embodied in the core of the modern cultural center. Unfortunately, we didn't win <laughs> the competition. It's now in, uh, realized by Barozzi Vega. The concept of palimpsest, of superposition and overwriting of the pre-existing is an important rule for the developing and transformation of our cities, our environment, but also of our civilization, our culture, and even of ourselves. So a military writing hall and uh, the horse tables can be overwritten as city theater. From the moment in which we begin to design a project, we are faced with a specific physical and social context, and therefore with the, a pre-existing situation. A situation without pre-existing qualities does not exist, and therefore each intervention represents a transformation of a pre-existing situation, a reuse. We are always strongly interested in urban projects because we strongly believe that working with strong architectures, which can take the role of urban activators on the architecture of the city, can give new identity to our suburbs and to remote areas which are growing and evolving very fast, like this, in this case for the Vatville railway station competition in the suburbs of Sengal. This process has a lot to do with an idea of collective intimacy. Creating a collective intimacy was also the challenge in Givisier, a suburb of Fribourg, where our winning housing project for persons with reduced mobility becomes a place for socialization and identification for the entire population of this heterogeneous suburb with a lack of places of social reference and identification and on the other hand giving at the same time a better life quality to persons with a, a physical handicap, promoting an active interaction with the social context of a small suburban community. We strongly believe in this social rule of the architecture of the city, where private intimacy meets collective intimacy. Aldo Rossi defines the city as an architecture, a concept that is crucial to face in an effective way urban space and its transformation. For Aldo Rossi, making architecture is always about dealing with the architecture of the city. I quote Aldo Rossi, the, the city is to be understood as architecture. By architecture, I mean not only the visible image of the city and the sum of its different architectures, but the architecture as a construction, the construction of the city over time. I use the term architecture in a positive and pragmatic sense as a creation inseparable from civil civilized life and the society in which is manifested. By nature, it is collective. And this, it is just this architecture of the city that became also a workshop team for our second year students at the EPFL in Lausanne. We let the students work on the city of Lugano, defining full, full and empty spaces, structure and space of the architecture of the city, creating flexible and sustainable modular structures for the urban scale, structure that to be placed as constructive modules of the architecture of the city, defining more intimate urban spaces, creating new ideal images of five real city areas. This type of work gave birth to new architecture identities, hybrid buildings able to contain any type of public facilities thanks to their structural, typological and urban quality. For example, instead of a 40 million bus platform to be realized in Lugano, with our students we propose a multifunctional architecture with bus station, retail, university and co-working spaces, a hybrid building able to redesign the entire area, a landmark for the city. The first project we want to show you is our first housing project. 
the House for a Sculpture was a very particular project of architectural preservation built between 1998 and 2000. The house is located in the historic center, the medieval core of Mendrisio. The building was conceived as a sort of connection building between the old courthouse and an ancient monastery. Due to several alterations and modifications during centuries, the typology of the building before our intervention was very unusual, difficult to be defined. The original historic structure was destroyed after the cent after over the centuries as a consequence of the inheritance laws in Ticino, while the house was divided in different parts. The house, as we found it, was characterized by an overlay of two different structural systems. The outer medieval stone walls form a solid and precise case while the internal original structure was destroyed in the 19th century. The new internal structure was organized on four levels instead of the three and was not relevant in terms of, of architecture and heritage. Most of the original medieval opening were shut while the spaces were small and extremely dark. The demolition of the whole more recent internal structure appeared as the only possible and logical way to proceed. This operation allowed the original medieval structure to be reborn as a new element and all windows were reopened. The demolition process allowed us to place a new precise concrete structure into the old medieval case. A simple, precise and forceful structure that at the same time defines all spaces of the new house. It is the classical theme of the house inside the house we created a new balance, uh, a sort of juste avant, a, a wise dialo dialogue between old and new, a sequence of light material, spaces, sounds. The new structure, caused in apparent concrete, stiffens also the old medieval walls that become the shell of the new core. The ground floor on the courtyard level, thanks to the demolition of the recent walls, the ancient entrance was restored, becoming the new access to the exhibition space of the artist. All space-defining elements, such as slabs, walls, ceilings, are also structural elements. There is no difference between space-defining elements and structures. They form a monolithic conglomerate cast in concrete. While the ground floor is the level of the courtyard, the first level of the house is the level of the garden. There is a substantial equivalence between structure and space. The form of the structural elements is at each time adapted to local needs and functions. They become kitchen, laundry, fireplace, bathrooms, wardrobes. At the second level, the structure is completely completed by uh, the only light, non-structural element, which defines like coffers the two bedrooms, closed by sliding doors. This is the only exception to a structural system in which structure and space are otherwise completely equivalent. The third level is conceived as a big and high open space reaching until the roof, a multifunctional space that hosts library, private studio and playroom. The section underlines the relationship between the historic medieval shell with his uneven original windows and the new precise concrete structure. The new house is an unitary entity made of two complementary parts, shell and core. The courtyard facade after the renovation with the reopening of the original windows and of the main entrance. The garden facade after demolition of precarious outbuildings and with the original medieval windows restored. The typical material of the ancient medieval facade gives the, to the garden a particular atmosphere, an archaic expression. This archaic appearance is emphasized, emphasized at night time by the contrast between the medieval facade and the warm, intimate internal spaces. In the courtyard, the old entrance is restored to give access to the sculpture exhibition space of the artist. The artist's bedroom, a small room with a simple natural light regulation system, the whole house is characterized by a very simple but effective standard. The living and dining area of the first floor with direct access to the garden, the apparent concrete structure is clearly visible in contrast with the plastered medieval shell. The new window frames on the studio level are attached directly to the existing walls with a very simple detail. The relationship between old and new is straight and pragmatic. The openings indeed start from the floor level, giving a nice and charming view of the garden below. 
Materials are taken from the local tradition and are simple and cheap. Concrete for the new structure, steel frames for the glass doors, small white terrazzo tiles of the on the floor. The concrete floor of the ground level is the only exception with structural cores, while structural cores are completed with maple wood infills. The staircase space that connects the four different levels of the house. The process who led to the creation of the cultural center of Chiasso was a very important experience about the refoundation of a place, a process in which we were involved not only for with the design of urban space and buildings, the transformation of an abandoned and polluted industrial area in cultural center, a process who takes its origins from the synergy of the right resources at the right time. You may know Chiasso City, or rather a large town of 8,500 people, located on the very southern border of Switzerland, a few kilometers from the Italian city of Como. Chiasso is the border, a place that would not exist in this place without the border. And it is, it is indeed the presence of the border that confers to Chiasso that particular atmosphere, a unique mix of cultural, social, historic and urban facts. Film di director Heinz Büttler defined Chiasso in his film with the same title, The End of Switzerland. Chiasso is the biggest freight train station of Switzerland, and maybe it is this sea of rails that confers to Chiasso that particular character of port city, of harbor city. The legendary graphic designer Max Huber lived in Chiasso. He loved Chiasso. The center of his activities was Milano, where he of often worked in partnership with the most interesting creative actors of that time, like Achille Castiglione or Bruno Munari. Max Huber was the creator of the corporate design of many famous Italian labels, like Borsalino in 1949, or the curator of advertising graphic design for Olivetti in the 50s, a cultural heritage of importance. Max Huber was also engaged in creating the graphic design of different publications on architect architecture and also for Siam. After Max Huber's death, the Waido, Japanese artist Aoi Huber Kono, decided to dedicate an exhibition space to the memory of her husband. We, we, we didn't know each other, but she was impressed by a competition entry of our studio because it handled the themes of transparency and colors. She contacted us with her staff and asked for help in the realization of a small exhibition space, though the economic availability was not enough to buy a ground and build a museum on it. The city authority of Chiasso had restored with his cultural-oriented local politics the local theater, providing a high-end end cultural program of modern dance, jazz, and theater. Close to the city center, and an abandoned industrial area was located between the refurbished city theater and the school district. Abundant since years, the site was polluted and constituted a serious ecological risk in the immediate surroundings of kindergarten and primary school and their playgrounds. The roofing of the garage, located just beside the entrance of the primary school, was covered by 900 square meters of Ethernet plates in advanced state of deterioration, containing asbestos. Many plates were broken with the asbestos fibers showing off. The decision seemed clear to us. The new museum had to be built in front of the theater on the place of the car workshop. At the same time, we noticed that the garage had the potential to be transformed with a low-cost intervention in a multipurpose hall, considering that the Ethernet roofing had, however, to be substituted and disposed. This proposal caught soon the interest of the city authority, and we were, cha we were charged to work out a master plan for the whole school and culture district, defined as Cittadella della Cultura. On a first step, we worked out a master plan for this abandoned industrial area with the proposal to demolish the critical elements to keep but to keep the garage and to transform it. Our merit was to recognize the potential of the pre-existing structures. Despite of the limited economic availability and, few and with a few elements, it could be possible to create a new public district dedicated to culture. The model study of 2002 shows the proposal. Our small project at the end of Switzerland got some interest also on national level so the then president of the Swiss Confederation, Moritz Leuenberger, expressed the desire to see the project, considering it exemplary as a recovery solution of abandoned industrial zones in sensible city areas. 
the garage was transformed in Spazio Ficina, which means workshop space, a multi-purpose hall of uh, 800 square meters without own infrastructures and with an industrial finishing standard. The open facade towards the demolished car workshop was closed by containers which provide the services, the kitchen, bar, and a technical room. With simple but effective means, good acoustics are provided to the hall for live music events. In a similar way to the facade, four skylights provide the hall with daylight. The longitudinal section and the facade show the new shell of the building. The existing walls are coated with a thermal insulation covered with a dark corrugated zinc sheet. The cross-section showed the conceptual and constructive simplicity of the intervention. The new facade coating enhanced the clearness of the pre-existing build building, and another container of the main facade creates the entrance. The Max Museo is made of a simple volume placed on a base which resolves the level difference between the street and the new public squares in front and beside Spazio Ficina. Max Museo is a simple structure characterized by a substantial equivalence between structure and space. Visitors access the museum from the street level through the big entry porch and the entrance hall with bookshop and small cafeteria. From where, from here they access the small museum foyer. From here, visitors can access the main level of the museum with a sequence of three exhibition spaces. Or from the foyer descend at the lower level that hosts the two-story multipurpose space, the services, the wardrobes, and the Max Huber archive. The structure is almost symmetric, but it is performed in two different ways on the two sides of the length section. What we obtain is a special complexity starting from an elementary simple structure. The two cores at the entry level support the longitudinal walls of the exhibition spaces on the upper floor. Thanks to pre-stressed uh, uh, white cantilever are made possible without structural elements on the two ends of the building. The entrance porch at one end and the two-story space on the other. The third core doesn't support any structural parts. It stabilizes the structure and contains the elevator of the building, of the building's technique. The structure is symmetrical and simple forceful and clear, the third core is not a structural element. Over this finished but raw structure, realized with very inexpensive constructive solutions, where the openings are closed with etched glazing to diffuse the light, the exterior shell made of profiled industrial U-glass elements which filter and diffuse the light towards the interior fits perfectly like a glove on the structure. and the external uh, and the entrance of the theater. The cross section show the clear and simple structural concept and the double facade system which filters and diffuses the daylight, providing a good natural illuminance of the exhibition spaces. The construction detail of the facade clearly shows the concept of the upper floor facade, where between the exterior shell made of industrial glass and the interior wall of the exhibition rooms, which is only glass in the very upper part, an interstitial space is generated that diffuses the daylight in an optimal way and can be highlighted at night time to make the museum visible as important landmark in the cityscape. The 9 by 9 meter cantilever who generates the low and wide entrance porch. The expression of the wide full glass volume in the cityscape with the great transparent opening of the cafeteria that it is at one time a showcase of the museum towards the city and, on the other hand, an observatory of the urban context for the visitor. The reflecting shell of the Max Museo with its particular ice cube effect and the mud zinc skin of Spazio Ficina are complementary in their expression, adapting themselves to the atmosphere of the context. Thanks to the lowering of the squares to the level of the gardens, a safe place is generated in which all kinds of recreational, cultural, and scholastic activities are made possible. The new access porch of the school is a discreet and filigrant filter between school gardens and cultural center. At night time, the museum transforms itself in an elegant, luminous body, performing as an important landmark in the cityscape. 
the small entrance hall to the staircase and the, the exhibition rooms. The staircase with shifted stairs that provide daylight in the lower floors. The multipurpose space on the lower level. The exhibition spaces on the upper floor, not yet finished. All installations are integrated in the structures. The same space is finished in 2005 and the same spaces in recent times during a Pyrenees exhibition 2012. The interior of the multipurpose hall Spazio Ficina, thanks to a simple displaying system, the hall can be also used as exhibition space in synergy with Max Museo. The standard of the interior is that of an industrial shed with a simple and fast gas heating system on the ceiling. The first exhibition at Spazio Ficina in 2005 shows the intimacy uh, that can be created in this restored industrial building. The next project shows an architecture that has a very particular and intimate relationship with the landscape and with the context. In the aerial view of the east side of the Lago Maggiore, we can recognize the delta of the river Maggia, which divides Ascona from Locarno, and on the right side, the affluence of the river Verzasca, and the alluvional zone of the Ticino River. In the past centuries, the limit between lake and lakeshore was always very undefined and uncertain. It was a wetland which, thanks to the channeling of the rivers and the hydroelectric management of the water resources, seemed to be under control. In the last decades, the Magadino Valley has developed itself in an extremely heterogeneous landscape. Agriculture, industries, greenhouses, gravel pits, military airport, infrastructures for sport and a natural reserve found place in this territory. Also, the Swiss Association of Master Builders took advantage of these favorable conditions to build in this place their professional training center. For years, the professional center developed itself to the professional vocational training center for all the professions related to construction. But with the recent climatic changes, the Ticino River and the other affluents of the Lago Maggiore can suddenly transform the valley in an immense flood. In the years from 2000 to 2003, the laboratories of the vocational center were completely flooded two times. The workstations and the uh, digitally controlled machines for metal and wood processing were completely underwater. Each flood was causing huge damages for which the assurance companies were no longer willing to pay. To solve this situation, the Swiss uh, Society of Master Builders decided to organize a competition for a new building to save the laboratories from the floods. The purpose of our competition entry was to get a new master plan for the whole professional training center of the master builders. Our project proposed to put some order in the existing ensemble, introducing the concept of campus of the construction competence. We disposed a new building along the eastern border of the campus, completing the existing settlement to a well-defined shape and disposed the three new laboratories in a unique shed. The project which has was realized in 2011, maintains this concept, but for economical reasons, the last project was shortened by 30 meters to reduce the volume. Thanks to the absolute modularity of the project, this shortening was possible without changing anything of the original concept. And with a certain surprise, the master builders discovered uh, that their new project was not built in brick, but was conceived as a light structure made of steel. The new building had to bring the laboratories above the flute level, avoiding an interruption of the continuity of the valley. The plan of the ground floor shows the regular structure of the concrete platform. We decided to raise the level of the platform 80 centimeters higher than the flute level. In that way, the space under the platform can be used as car parking. The structural grid of the platform is 9 by 12 meters and is based on a multiple of 3 meters. Due to the very low quality of the sandy ground, the structure is founded on very large linear foundations similar to ski to avoid an expensive fundament on piles. The whole building is conceived without exceptions on a module of 3 meters, which corresponds to the ideal module for a workstation bench. The laboratories are, are conceived as a light steel structure with steel columns every 3 meters, covered by a framework of trusses with a free span of 27 meters, 
the whole width of the building. Each of the three sections has a one-story concrete basement to host the dressing rooms and the infrastructures. The laboratories are conceived as industrial production sheds, which, which can be divided and equipped following the needs of the users. Each workstation has its own modular skylight, which provides diffuse north light provided by the sawtooth roof of the shed. A pleasant, diffuse, unitary, regular and shadow-free light permeates the working spaces in an ideal way. Also, the spaces on the upper level above the dressing rooms are covered by the same framework of steel trusses to provide spaces with a completely free, which are completely free of structural elements and can be easily be adapted to the needs of the users. The to host the theory and the drawing classrooms, providing the same shadow-free and natural northern light. The roof plan shows the regular design of the modular south to the roofing system, with the only exception of the two-story parts of the building, characteriz characterized by a double module. The section shows how the south to the roofing system allows to manage, within the logic of the structural system, every situation, like the two-story parts of the building. The facade facing the campus shows the three independent access stairs and the characteristic points of tooth shape which is so typical for this big industrial shed. The cross sections show the absolute simplicity of the construction concept once again. The structural system is simple and precise. It solves in uh, one fell swoop all the needs of the client about fluid protection, function, flexibility, structure, lightness, natural lighting, ergonomics and uh, of the workplace. It is a simple but effective organism. The structure of the roofing, a light framework of trusses, is a sort of tracery that covers the whole building. The image of the building on the concrete platform reminds that of the craft craftsman's workpiece crafted in a precise and precious way on his workbench to protect it from the flute. The model of the competition entry shows an architecture which is reduced to his essence. The challenge was for us to maintain the characteristic of this architectural organism in his essence and precision also with his realization. The real building appears like an arc resting on his supports ready to resist to the next flood of the Lago Maggiore. The relationship between the landscape is very special. This characteristic is emphasized by the material of the facade, a simple corrugated sheet in polished stainless steel, which makes the expression of the building change, adapting to its, uh, its context, gener generating always different atmospheres similar to the surrounding landscape. A quick peek under the concrete platform that supports the shed shows like the building itself is completely detached from the ground and how with a simple concept it was possible to have a covered parking, saving space for the landscape, a sustainable urban space management. The glossy materials of the facade lets the building appear as a precise and pointy object with a shape similar to a sawtooth workpiece milled on the bench. The interior light is very pleasant and diffuse. The diffusion of the light is provided by translucent multi-wall sheets made of acrylic glass, a very economical industrial product, which provides very good light transmission and, and thermal properties. The absence of shadows creates an optimal light for all activities of the training center, working on the bench or on digital machines, teaching, drawing. The theory classrooms on the upper floor a drawing classroom. Thanks to the diffuse and indirect light and the absence of shadows, the layout of the classrooms is completely free. The perforated corrugated sheets of the industrial roofing system provide suitable room acoustics for teaching. A different layout of a theory classroom. Single punctual windows frame or portions of the surrounding landscapes like pictures on the wall. A classroom for computer aided design with side light. The standard white color of the industrial materials contributes to create a serene ambience. The laboratories for professional training demonstrate how a simple modular architectonic concept can not only match all the functional needs but makes also possible an easygoing integration of all the installations. 
in the laboratory for the carpenters, the strict relationship between constructive module and workstation is clearly comprehensible. A system of partitions with this part of the project separates the workstations from the machines or from the instructor's offices. At the same time, these room dividers work as acoustical absorbers, protects the workstation from the noise of the machines. The last view of the laboratories show the lightness of the steel structure, which spans uh, 27 meters. As said, the integrated installation concept is an integral part of the architectural project and was worked out in a close cooperation with the technical engineers and the users. The new ARC, the professional training center, is inserted in a precise but sustainable way in the landscape of the Magadino Valley. The challenge was to create a building that could match, match all the given infrastructural, functional and economic needs of the clients. Rather than a result uh, constrictive for the architectural project, this constriction generated a strong project. The result is an architectural system where few precise concepts and few simple constituting elements repeated in series without exceptions in a serial way constitute a complex organi organism which is able to carry in an appropriate way all the aspects of the project. And by the way, a careful management of the architectonic and structural resources result in a sustainable management of financial resources which leads to a clear economic advantage. This building is a low cost building which are construction costs that are significantly lower compared to all other buildings for professional schools in the Ticino region. One should be light like a bird and not like a feeder, says Paul Valéry. This building has this um, ambition. We come now to a project which has been very important for us. It was the very first attempt to establish Durish and Nolly architects out of Ticino boundaries, and that happened by winning a Swiss-selected competition in Lucerne. The goal of a private foundation was to develop social housing for students with 20% lower location rates compared to the average market price. A joint venture between City of Lucerne, which owned the property of the building site, and a private foundation. A project to host 280 students with in the park of the major retirement house of the city of Lucerne. The main issue was to place a 280 students block into a quite residential contest without being too much invasive. We designed a modular building based on the size of a single room, referring to the typical one of the existing surrounding houses. In contrast with the precision and the completely modular regularity of the structure, we designed the external pathways as curved and smooth tracks in the form of meanders in order to create new spaces for social interaction and activities. The building is strictly modular, following a regular grid without exceptions. Even the staircases and the elevator entrance modules respect the base module given by the student rooms. They are not ex exceptions to the structure, they confirm it. In the realized project, the modular structural grid with columns is replaced by concrete walls. The modular structure allows to create different apartment sizes and topologies. Those are organized like a game, a domino, where cores are the only fixed parts. We came out with a series of very dense and flexible plans. The result is a huge diversity of the apartments, a big flexibility in adapting the topologies of the different apartment sizes, following exactly the mix requested by the client and the high density. The volume is articulated on different levels to better suit the project site. Thanks to the repetition of single elements, the construction was cheap in line with the parameters of social housing. Also the corners of the building are solved without exceptions following the logic and uh, the rules of the structural system. In a fast sequence, I will show samples of the different apartment typologies, starting from the one student room and the one bedroom studio, to the apartment for two students, three bedrooms and one bedroom for three students, four bedroom apartment with loggia and two bedrooms, apartment for five students. 
The rendering for the general contractor software shows the common space of a four-room apartment looking from the kitchen dining a area to the living area. A common space is the in the realized building. These common areas, which include kitchen, dining and living room, are also spaces for distribution. The common spaces are mostly double-oriented, giving better light to the apartment. Furniture is simple and economic. You form a room. The parapets of the windows in the student rooms are whole on desktop level to strive for natural light. The facade of the 120 meters building <coughs> is based on a series of prefabricated elements designed on the module of a single room. It is Minergy, Minergy certificated the Swiss label for sustainable architecture. View from the house of elderly, a mix of old and young people stimulates social interactions. Students can use most of the existing facilities like park, gym and refectory. The relationship with the context shows how the huge volume takes care thanks to his modularity and conformation of the volume of the existing urban scale. A facade detail which shows like almost the all the exceptions can be solved within the modular facade system. A re-entrant corner where two different high wings of the big building are connected. On its perimeter, the big modular structure adapts itself locally to the immediate context. Small intimate gardens for the students are created. Thanks to the ceramic material, the facade is less static and reflects the surroundings. Every staircase has a different color to make the identification easier. The result are nice intense stair colors which are in contrast to light and warm apparent apartment spaces. Relaxing and intimate spaces. Our latest building, completed by the end of 2013, has as general planners and in partnership with Beard and the Platzes architects, is the Federal Criminal Court of Switzerland in Bellinzona. The project site is a central area of Bellinzona, the capital city of Canton Ticino. Here, numbers of public buildings characterized the area. Viale Stefano Francini, on which the two buildings are aligned, was designed in the mid uh, 19th century as a new urban project that changed the modern city. It was the first planned extension of the old city and has an important symbolic value that represents the becoming capital of the new Canton Ticino. All public buildings of the new capital were designed along this boulevard. The new criminal federal court is built on the site of the old school of commerce as part of a project that includes the regional tribunal and the public space between the two buildings. At the moment the criminal federal court is built, uh, the other project should be realized soon. The concept of the project is very simple. The main volume of the existing building was preserved and restored following the requirements of heritage preservation policies. The side wings of the rear volume of the two-story edifice were replaced by a three-story building to suit the new function and user demands within the old building volume. This ambitious concept was to create a unique building where the old part merges into the new one, giving birth to a new entity. The new plan reminds to the original typology of a courtyard building where office spaces are placed along the facade and the main courtrooms are in the middle. The longitudinal section is characterized by a series of vaulted spaces that increase in dimension to reach the main central room, the tribunal court. The overhead opening gives diffuse light to central spaces, emphasizing the in institutional value of the room. The working spaces, the offices of the judges and the employees are, dip are disposed around the central court room and are separated by two lateral covered courtyards that provide natural light to the office corridors. Structurally speaking, the cross section has a symbolic value where the court as an independent and impartial institution is separated from the rest of the building. The concept of our project, pr preserving the front part of the building and replacing the wings, reminds of John Soane's attitude for the project of the English Parliament in Westminster. The existing part is completed by new elements to a new entity, or better, it is recomposed to a new entity. 
We maintained the main building of the old school to preserve the urban, pr urban presence of the building along the streets. The boulevard had to be maintained as it was, so we decided to keep the existing facade as it was, to value the original idea. In the model, you can see the effect of the new three-story building combined with the main building. The longitudinal section here, you see the competition one, shows the sequence of different vaulted spaces, a crescendo from the entrance porch to the main court hall. The plan of the final project show shows the intention of creating a new unique entity. The new building is attached to ex existing one to maintain the original typology. The ground floor of the executive projects, the floor of the spaces for public access, entrance, porch, entrance, visitor hall, main court, minor court, and press room. These public spaces are surrounded by the offices of the judges and the staff of the federal court. First floor, the auditorium and the classrooms of the old trade school were maintained integrally in their substance and take the cafeteria and the chambers of the courts on. The landscape's atriums beside the courts provide natural light to the corridors of the offices. The corridors open like arcades to the atriums. Second floor, around the dome of the great card room, the library of the court is created. We like the idea that the legal knowledge is placed around the card room to provide the judges with wise and correct judgments. Longitudinal section, cross section of the definitive project. The main building of the old school of commerce is integrally maintained and restored. South facade. Side facade showing the harmonious addition of a three-story new building with existing two levels. The concept of the pyramidal domes was extended to minor lateral spaces placed beside the main court. The result is a series of homologous spaces different in shape and dimension. The structure of the domes is a composite structure composite of two elements, a concrete cage realized on site, linked to a series of precast white concrete elements. The Federal Penal Court is conceived as a massive apparent concrete building. The exterior shell and the interior structural elements are all in concrete. The idea was to avoid any form of coating, especially for the domes and the court halls. To reach a perfect acoustic of the court halls, a perforation of the domes and disposing acoustic resonators behind that holes was indispensable. It was clear to us that for architectural and aesthetic reasons, we needed to provide a relief or a structure of the surface of the domes to ensure a better integration of these holes. We thought about the origins of trials and found that in ancient times, in classical Greece or in uh, medieval Europe, trials were handled under a tree, often a, an oak or a lime. We did some handmade plasticine models and tried to create some vegetal or organic patterns. The main problem was constituted also in this case by the research of the right module, which could permit to cast a repeated relief in a form and to repeat the same module to form an unitary design for the concrete domes. Soon we, we got clear that a geometric parametrization of these organic forms and the definition of a triangular module was necessary to the realization of the domes with identical elements repeated in series to form a unitary structure. To solve the problem, we charged Gramazio and Kohler, uh, architects from ETH Zürich, to develop, based on our plasticine models, a digital model defining the correct parametric relief. The domes were divided in identical triangular modules to integrate the holes and constitute an unitary and continuous an ornamental design, almost like a 3D arabesque. From this parametric digital relief, the matrix for the production of the precast elements uh, of the domes were done with the digital cutter. The elements with a weight of uh, one half ton were put in place face down and on a scaffolding. This required a high precision in the laying of the elements that were connected by a concrete structure cast in place to form a unitary composite and massive dome structure. The new spaces are constituted by apparent concrete as one unitary material that emphasizes the substantial equivalence of structure and space. In this sense, the dome is a structural acoustic ceiling, the walls are done in white concrete, and even the floors are cast in place in white terrazzo with Carrara marble aggregates. 
and the acoustic in the car, thanks to the perforated concrete dome, is excellent. The visitor's hall and the main court hall are connected in an enfilade and can be adapted in a flexible way to suit different types of trials. The entrance transept with the old historical walls that are plastered and painted in white. One of the interior atriums that gives natural light to the three-story office corridor. All the spaces and elements, even the stairs, are entirely cast in place in white concrete. The stair is cast in concrete and the horiz horizontal surfaces are uh, only polished on site. The library created around the main dome it's not so intimate because the, the books, uh, no, <laughs> we are uh, missing the books, but with the books it's very intimate space. The old conference hall transformed into cafeteria. Here we were faced with the problem to integrate this wall painting of 1915 representing the world commerce because it was very dominant in a space that should be intimate. The choice of dark wood for the floor and the furniture allowed to create a better intimacy for the cafeteria. The main facade along the boulevard was completely restored in order to maintain the original aspect. The entrance porch in front of Castel Grande, one of the three Bellinzona castles th that are uh, UNESCO World Heritage. And the connection uh, between uh, the old building and the new apparent concrete structure. The picture shows the particular tectonic concept of the facade which shifted floors to get a classical architectural order. To design and to build is an uh, intensive teamwork. To get the best result, it is necessary to have a good client to dispose of a team of reliable practice partners who are aware of the res their responsibility, to search for synergies with other professionals, engineers, technicians, consultants, in the case of the federal court, even with other architects, and, of course, it is important to have good entrepreneurs, suppliers, motivated and well-trained craftsmen. We are very grateful to all of them. I conclude by thanking you so much for the invitation, the attention and the interest. Thank you.